All right, welcome back. Another episode of Mindful Mayhem. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Today's episode is going to be a good one. I uh, got to have a conversation with, in my opinion, one of the greatest metal vocalists of all time, Tim Ripper Owens. Uh, Tim Ripper Owens was the singer for Judas Priest. Uh, he was also the singer for Ingve Melmstein, and now is the singer for KK's Priest, uh, featuring KK Downing, former lead guitarist of Judas Priest, whose new album comes out October 1st. So be sure to stay on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, here we go. Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. I tell you, you talk down and fly like a suck. Dude, it is a pleasure to get to speak with you, man. Yeah, nice to talk to you, Cody. Hell yeah, man. So before we get started, uh, I know you got a new album coming out, KK's Priest. Uh, what date is that coming out? Uh, I think it's like August 20th, I think. is It's on pre, pre-sale right mm-hmm. now. You can go order it, and try to get all your orders in now. And I think it officially launches on August 20th, I think. Yeah, I've uh, I've checked out. I think wait, there are two songs that are out now: uh, "Sermons of the Sinner" and uh, "Hellfire Thunderbolt." Yeah, they are fucking insane. Like I, oh yeah, man, those, I love them. Those were going to come out of the gate with. They're definitely insane songs. I mean, you know, obviously everybody's going to know that the whole record is not going to be that fast and craziness. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, KK came right out of the gate and said, "I'm going to bust you right in the face." Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, and it's it is because like, you know, I just listened to both of them back to back and I was like, what the hell is this? Like, this is, you know, I don't know, like metal just seems like it's kind of like not died away. I mean, because that's definitely not true, but it doesn't have that same kind of like intensity. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it doesn't. I I think, you know, it depends. It depends. I mean, the thing of is this record was meant to you know kk wanted to write what he wants to write he wants to write like kk downing so he doesn't care who it's going to please he's doing it for the fans that he knows would want to hear it so i think sometimes people just do it to try and please other people or what i don't know what it is you know and and it's like he was hungry too you gotta remember this is a hungry record he's writing here. he hasn't written yeah. he hasn't written songs in, in years now so uh, you know 10 years whenever he left to his priest i'm not for sure so uh, yeah. i think it was something to prove but i i agree i mean you know all music styles change i don't even know what you know my nephews listen to i mean they got they're they're heavy and they're and the bands are big but i don't listen yeah. to them you know but everybody's everybody's different yeah ex- no i'm the same way like i i've tried listening to new or you know newer metal and it's just not like i don't know there's something about having like just like the speed intensity like being over the top like i don't know i I, like i that's the kind of stuff that i want to hear like whenever i listen to metal and this album at least you know from the first two songs is definitely like a a, like a solid throwback to what is and even the other songs cody are the other songs are are uh it's got the epic kind of songs it's got the Mm -hmm the uh, raise your fists and brothers of the road to kind of rock songs that just chug along and you sing along with and your brothers of the road and we rock, you know I mean? That kind of yeah. a, the kind you go to a concert and sing with. And there's, it, I think the other thing is it's, it's, you know, it's got the kind of lyrics that, you know, it's a lot of times people just want to be so damn serious too. I mean, you can sing about wild and free and brothers of the road and, you know, sermons of the center and things like that. Everybody's yeah. always wanting to, to be so damn serious all the time. You know, metal's got to metal's got to be layered with a little bit of cheese. It, you know, it's like a it's like yeah. a pizza. You know, I mean, you got to uh, in a in a good way. Yeah. I mean, no, it, and that's it, the thing about this. But those songs are just. You're right, man. They are just. Uh, 
it's a way to open the gate. And there's a couple other ones like that on there as well. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously a lot of it is to do with KK Downing just being one of the greatest guitarists of all time, like hands down. But like, dude, your voice is so goddamn good. Like it's, you know, like I, I have an appreciation for like the people who do like the newer metal, like the vocals, the real deep guttural. Yeah. I know it's like hard to do, but it isn't like the same as like your type of vocals. Like yours are just so much yeah. more intense and it fits like this music so well. Like, I, I mean, did you, yeah. when you started singing, was that like kind of the goal was to have that voice or were you, did you not know? Like, well, I, didn't, I didn't really know when I, I was always a choir singer and stuff. Right. But I remember yeah. singing, singing the rock songs and it, I remember the first band I tried out for, I had to go sing like, oh, I didn't make like the first three bands I tried out for. I went, I went and auditioned for this band and I sing like a Scorpion song, which wasn't my boss, <laughs> but I, everything I sang sounds like ACDC. So okay. it'd be like, it's no one like you. It was just kind of like, man, it sounds like Brian Johnson singing. So yeah. I didn't make anything. Um, but yeah, you know, my thing was, you know, you talk about these modern singers and the guttural stuff. I love that. I love that stuff. And I yeah. love singing that stuff. So people, I will sing on stuff all the time. It's got women, uh, uh, Sepultura. I mean, I, there's videos mm -hmm. out there of me singing with Sepultura. And someone's like, dude, you sound like, you actually sound like them. I'm like, that's because <laughs> it's really cool to have a voice that one minute you could be doing a low, like guttural, hardcore or death metal kind of a thing. And next minute you're singing the high notes. And so, I mean, my least favorite thing to sing is actually the high notes. <laughs> really? <laughs> because I like, you know what I like? The heavier mid range, mm -hmm. you know, and I always, you know, the upper kind of voice that's just powerful, you know, that's my favorite type of singing. Yeah, I, that's what I've always liked too. Like, I mean, the high notes are just, they're impressive. Like, you know, it's like, it's like you have a fucking like whammy bar in your throat, you know? Like, yeah. Like, but like, but yeah, that mid range, that like strong mid range that like. And you know, uh, Judas Priest was a lot. My, my bands, I like use high notes as high notes. They didn't sing a lot of high songs. Sermons at the Center is a high song. I wrote yeah. Scream Machine. I wrote Scream Machine with Beyond Fear because I wanted to make a song like that, just high notes and high song. But most of the stuff are always, high notes right you kind of mm -hmm. sing something and go yeah or whatever but yeah i yeah. like to i like that i like the power here's the thing cody mm -hmm. is versatility is what i always liked i like i always said i like to sing in characters it's okay. like a you know and that's why i like ronnie james dio one minute he sounded like a woman next minute he sounded like the devil you know it was kind of like, yeah and rob halford i became a fan of singing because i realized somebody's doing what i did when I heard Electric Guy, it was like, wait a minute, this guy changed his voice three times at the beginning of that song. <laughs> and that's how I love to sing. Yeah. I'm like, eh, you know, but it's it's cool to do do all that stuff. Unfortunately, for my voice, I get a lot of work because I can sing just about anything. Yeah. No, I mean, did you, so do inquire and everything. I mean, did you notice that you had like kind of a, I don't know. I mean, I guess you call it a gift. I mean, did you notice that you had that or was it something that you just had to work like relentlessly oh, had, on? I had way better gift when I was younger than I do now because I wish I had the <laughs> voice that I had. When I, um, you know, absolutely. I've said it all along. I wanted to be a guitar player. Mm -hmm. And I went over to my buddy's house and I said, I, he, I went over because my friend said I could sing. And I walked in with my guitar like I was going to play. And all of a sudden he started playing Deep Purple and playing arpeggios. And I went, well, <laughs> I think it might be singing. Uh, but sing, yeah. I always say people have natural abilities. You don't become Tiger Woods by not being able to hit a golf ball. It becomes yeah. a lot. You, you have the natural ability and then you and I, and I ran with it. I had the natural ability and I took it serious, especially when I made Judas Priest. I might have been doing things I shouldn't have before that probably wasn't yeah. good for me. But when <laughs> I made Judas Priest, it became yeah. a job. But I was it was not KK and I talked about that back when I was in Judas Priest about natural ability. I'm a firm believer if you can't. My son couldn't play sports very good. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't even throw a baseball, and I realized he's not gonna he's not gonna play sports. I'm not even gonna push him to play it. Right. You know, he, he can sing and entertain. Him. But yeah, I definitely had it. You just got to take it to the next club. You see so many people, and I know you have around you that are such awesome musicians, but they're too oh, yeah. caught up in maybe drugs or alcohol or or not caring and not, not taking yeah. it serious. You know, laziness. Laziness is the thing I've noticed more oh, than anything. 
like absolutely or and just That's not so that just not I, having the like courage to be living in a van for two years which yeah. you know i get it it's not like a glamorous lifestyle but that's what kind of what it takes i you know i imagine well, it takes yeah i mean that's why i could never do anything like that now because i've i've worked too hard at it but you think of what you went through you think of of everything you went through but everything was all about going on stage and sounding good whatever it would take i mean listen you have people now that think if they it's somebody else's job to advertise their shows and make flyers up. You know, it's your job to do all this stuff. It's your job to try to be the best singer, best guitar player. I tell my musicians that play with me all over the world, you're going to be seen on YouTube after the show. Someone's going to show it probably while we're still on stage. So that, that could be your op- one person could see you and go, holy shit. Yeah. What? Yeah. You know, definitely. I mean, that's how I got discovered. So I guess not by <laughs> YouTube, but I got discovered yeah, by yeah. video tape. So yeah, exactly. Was- yeah. but you know i was fortunate enough i still do it when i tour i don't talk you know i'll be backstage and i'm not rude but mm-hmm. you know i'm like I'll, my head will be down in the dressing room and i'm like yeah you know i don't like to talk and i know what i have to do ronnie james dio would talk drink <laughs> beer probably smoke a bowl i don't know what he was doing yeah. but he was entertaining and he could do it me i'm over in the corner like don't talk yeah right right but that's yeah, how just- i had to do it yeah but yeah, was, ronnie was all about the music too rob halford i know is the same way he's all about trying to sing the best we go mm-hmm. through things in our life but yeah i mean i had the natural ability i said i wish i would have a natural ability to be a brain surgeon <laughs> but probably would have worked worked out a little better for me but I, I don't know man i like i do i remember like how i discovered you i mean obviously i think most people it's from you know judas priest and you know kind of that whole story but uh like i play guitar not like very well but i became like obsessed with Ingve. yeah and so i was like i was like i need to learn how to play like this which is you know yeah damn near impossible yeah but i was like i was like all right i gotta go to walmart buy a damn Ingve cd and just listen to it and it just happened to be uh, perpetual flame oh yeah <laughs> and so so i was like going to listen to it to be like oh i'm gonna get blown away by ingve but then like first song which i think is like death dealer it's like your voice comes in i was like whoa hold on now like <laughs> i was like ingve is amazing funny. but like that voice like whenever your voice came in like i was like oh my god like i had never really heard anything like that so uh, that's, oh, that's how funny. i just come yeah well, ingve is the man you know there's a guy right there that natural ability he definitely had it but man does he take guitar playing serious and he loves to play he has a guitar by every piece of furniture in his house and he would just sit on the couch just always grab a guitar and just be playing blues or yeah dude it's amazing well there's something that i have like this fascination with about people who are so talented but don't look like they're trying and he's yeah. one of those people that is just like okay when you sit down and try to learn this stuff it's almost impossible but then he's like running around on stage in like leather pants playing this, which I'm like, yeah, how throwing the stuff hell? around. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. And he's and he's he's got those sausage fingers, first of all. No one realizes this. <laughs> he's a big, he's tall and big, like yeah. his hands are so which I don't even think it'd be it'd be harder, right? And then yeah. uh he's got he makes it look easy and he has that, that mm. awesome vibrato, like ooh, it's a, yeah, yeah, he's crazy, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I like, used to always get people always to me. They, I'd be up there on stage hitting high notes and singing. They go, "Man, you don't look like you're trying pushing very hard." And, uh, well, 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 that's I, what I was gonna say too. Is that like he's like that? But I feel like you know, whenever I've seen you know videos of you singing, it seems like that. Like it seems. Well, it's harder and, when you. Cody, mm-hmm. it's harder when you're singing and you do it because if you push too hard, you might shit your pants. So you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta probably yeah. just hold back a little bit <laughs> yeah oh man yeah like i no like i watch like there's like you rob halford and like bruce dickinson you three for sure like have this like just such an effortless like way where you're like man like i feel like if i tried doing this like my i'd have like a damn aneurysm or something but like yeah <laughs> like you watch you guys so, it's, like, Holy shit, it's insane uh, i try to make it it's a little harder now but i try to make it look it was a lot easier when i was younger <laughs> so how important is like you know your vocal like maintenance like how much work do you put into that well it is i mean i'm sitting in here in my studio and i got every little concoction there is from the cough drops to the dry mouth lozenges to the <laughs> everything but i've never been like it nothing works like my voice yeah, is yeah. bad 
it's bad. It's, uh, and it's, it's hard. I try to drink a lot of water. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I go to the gym on the elliptical every morning and, uh, you know, as I do these interviews, I try to have the, the, the lozenges, but it's, I think everybody's different. You know, I, I prided myself on doing nothing for my, yeah. my career. I never had to Ronnie Dio always prided himself on going, you don't need to, I remember David Draymond said to him, Hey, how do you, what do you do to warm up? And, and Ron is like, you don't need to warm up. What do you, you ain't sick of warm up. But then well, you got Jeff Tate will warm up and warm down. Like he, mm -hmm. I've done show him. He'd be warming up an hour before the show. And then the show's over. You go for an hour. And I'm like, yeah. I'm tired of just listening to you. But um, yeah. I try to do a little exercises. Uh, I, I don't mm -hmm. have it with me. I got this Dr. Vox. It's a, a Dr. Vox is a little concoction. You blow into it mm -hmm. and it, strengthens your muscles and um uh I try to do some things now you know but yeah i don't i feel like nothing works i just i just get on stage and hope i can sing <laughs> yeah like so did you feel you know like going from like the judas priest cover band going into judas priest how, like do you suffer from stage fright or did you at that point no you know my first show with judas priest was uh I was so ready. Really? Vocally, man, I was, we were so ready. I remember, I wanted people to like me, but I, I remember, now you maybe want to get a throat lozenge because I'm thinking, <laughs> um, yo, know, I was ready. It was the boathouse in Virginia Beach. And, uh, man, I was ready to walk up there. I was so prepared, you know, and I think that's the thing. If you're prepared, I'm never nervous if I'm prepared and know my voice is good. I'm only nervous when I think I might sound like shit. You know, if I, yeah. if I go, oh man, or I don't know the songs that well, but it's only about my voice. And my voice doesn't, I'm, ne I'm never that nervous. I might be if I had to get up and sing acapella, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I'm all right. That, Good up there. Yeah, man. It just seems like it would be such a, like a night and day difference, you know, from going from, to actually singing in this band. Like that has to be, like, did it take yeah. you, because did it take you a while to realize, like, what it was that you were doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, like was there a delay in being like, oh, shit, I'm in Judas Priest now? Well, like, I, you know, when I made Judas Priest, I think I auditioned in February of 96. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't allowed to tell anybody till like, July. Like, so I had to come home, not tell anybody I made the band or even audition. But it worked mm -hmm. out that I auditioned. So, but I, I don't remember, you know, I remember the biggest part of me was coming home my parents picked me up at the airport and I gave them an autograph of Judas Priest. It said, dreams come true. And the band's autographs, there, mine's on there. I said, that's the band. And my mom's like, oh, maybe someday. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm the lead singer of the band. She's like, oh. but I, don't, I probably don't remember a whole lot the next couple of weeks because I was probably drinking. <laughs> not that I drunk. I'm not, a, never been a big drinker, to be honest. I said yeah. that like an alcoholic back then. I never drank that much anyways, but you know, I probably was going to the wing place and eating wings and drinking beer every night. Just, yeah party well if, but if there was it, ever I, a time to celebrate that would be it so <laughs> well you know the thing is cody it came out of nowhere i mean i'm just sitting, yeah. i was out of the judas priest tribute band for a year i was in a seattle tribute band i get a call from someone saying judas priest is interested and you're like what <laughs> i was i quit the judas priest tribute band because i was singing it like shit yeah yeah so i'm like i'm done with this a year yeah. later i gotta go to england and sing it so uh, but you know what what the thing is they were so cool we had so much fun we got along so well it was like a family so mm -hmm. the vibe was the weirdest part was your idols are now your friends so i kind of lost my idols you know my idols were yeah. gone you know because now they're my family and friends yeah yeah see that's because i've always heard you know like never meet your heroes which really only applies if they're assholes i was gonna say most <laughs> which, I've met a couple, but then you meet some, like I said, Judas Priest. When I met Ronnie Dio, it was like, man, that dude, he treated me like one of him. He was like, you're one of us now. Instead of some of the other ones, especially like the back then, the, I went to L.A., like the L.A. hair scene wasn't, it was gone in 97, 98, right? Yeah. But some of them, oh, yeah. they, they all hated me. They're like, man, I can't play a <laughs> concert. But everybody, for the majority, they're all cool. But yeah, I mean, I've met a few that were like, wow, that guy's an ass. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure it's just bound to happen. Like fame does something to people that 
not all people, but it definitely does something to some people where they. It does, and and you, you know it's busy. They go through a lot. You know what they did in the day. They just, I don't, I don't go to out drinking the bars or hanging out. I don't want to go to dinner with people when I get there. I'm kind of laid back, and uh, it's not that I'm an asshole. I just don't talk a lot, and I just kind of chill. Um, but some, you know, you could just. I mean, some of them just get it. Some of them are such they're big stars, man. They it's like they get it all the time and they, you know, listen, you sign up for it. There's other people that are big stars that go far and beyond, like, like, uh, um, Foo Fighters, uh, Dave Grohl. Uh, Dave Grohl. I mean, you always yeah. see those videos of him, but he's done some things. I know personally that he, Dio was having a, they were having a, 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 an event for him to raise money. Wendy was, he mm. was next door to it in the grocery store. So what's going on? They said, Oh, it's like, he walked in with his kids. It was a big event. They said, I'll come back and check it out. Well, he came back with his kids, walked around, ate outside with out front where all the people were sitting at the thing, mm -hmm. then went on stage and jammed and did all the interviews. <laughs> he just kind of walked there and did it for the hell of it, you know? And he's yeah, like, yeah. And then you have someone who put an album out in 1987 who's acting like a big rock star there, you know, like, I ain't talking to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can i can imagine for sure but it's good to hear that there are people that are like you know genuinely good dudes uh hey, so like yeah so like um like i have to ask so like when the when the damn rock star movie came out like how ups because it so like the more i've read about it the more i'm like oh this doesn't seem very realistic or not realistic but it doesn't seem very accurate did um not accurate at all yeah so i mean did they like, were you consult? Like, did you consultate them, or you know what I mean? You know, I think that's why it changed. You know, originally it was going to be called Metal Gods. They got the rights mm -hmm. to a New York Times article about me, and um, they they were making the movie, and, and the band was like, "Wait a minute, this isn't. I don't. We like how you're portraying us here. We we're going to yeah. have music in it and everything." And uh, mm -hmm. the band said, "We want some kind of creativity here. We want some. We want to." have some say and warner brothers was like no you can have no say so that's when the movie changed even more i think they they went off script more they took the basic mm -hmm. idea like when you see the tribute thing i mean listen they made it look like that first of all that i wasn't in a tribute band then and i wasn't that kind of a stalking fan kind of a guy yeah. I, I didn't yeah. get a job when i was working but um yeah, they they just made their own movie. Then it's funny you said because my daughter, she's sixteen. She was just her her boyfriend was over there. Dave. She was ta asking about. It. She goes, Dad, that it's. I looked up Rockstar and it says somebody said that was about you. And it says it's about Tim Rip Owens. So yeah. now she's like, she's never checked up. Like she, now I just saw a bio of you from MTV and. Um, but she was like, I said, listen, you can watch the movie, but it's not. There wasn't these sex parties going on. Mm -hmm. and there was the manager didn't have a wiener and, and i slept with him i mean all these things you know yeah. it, why, it's not true but the idea was tribute singer makes the band mm -hmm. when he auditioned he sang one note of a song and got the band oh, those things were similar then they just went off and made the okay. movie right first and of all mm -hmm. there was no crowds in in 1997 98 the shows they made it look like an arena you know we were yeah. playing you know, all bands were playing Bob's Big Bamboos and stuff back then. I mean, it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? There was no arenas yeah. going on. No, for sure. They did make it kind of look like a damn Kiss concert. Like, and yeah, but, and they, they looked like they made it look like Judas Priest from the 80s or or all those bands from the 80s. Yeah, you know? for and sure. For it sure. was 97 where, you know, you're trying your hardest to get out there and do something. Yeah, they definitely, ah, oh, that's true. They really did make it seem like it was set in the 80s. Because then he, like, leaves to go do, like, grunge stuff because grunge yeah. is exploding. But grunge was already gone. So, like. Grunge yeah. is already gone. And it's funny. That's hilarious. People, the metalheads always get pissed. And they say, what's your favorite movie in the song? I said, that last acoustic one, I think. was my favorite. I said, oh, my God. I hate that. That's really bad. I'm like, I don't know. Man. <laughs> it's not a, look, it's not a bad song. And none of the songs are bad. It's just, you know, it's not Judas Priest by any means. And it Mark would have Wahlberg, been good if we did the soundtrack, you know. I for sure. And you know, you know, what's Mark Wahlberg gonna do? He's got a lip sync, you know. Well, like he did, but I tell you what, it's the first time in my life I read abs it was when Mark <laughs> Wahlberg played. That's what I told my dad. You know what I always say is they say, What about that? Did Mark Wahlberg play it? I always go, Yeah, Boogie Nights, yeah, Mark Wahlberg was playing me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hell yeah. So, hey, it's not, you know, it's not a complete loss. Get yeah. to have Mark Wahlberg play you in a movie. But... I had asked. It was supposed to be Brad Pitt originally. Was it really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Damn. That's wow. a lot of pressure on Brad Pitt to play Tim Rip Rowan, so he probably was like, yeah, I better. <laughs> yeah, but... give it to Mark Wahlberg. Let him deal yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> and I love when people go, I can't believe someone like Mark Wahlberg plays just said, what, one of the biggest movie stars around? I mean, what do you <laughs> Well, he's yeah. from the Funky Bunch. Yeah, but he's one of the biggest movie stars. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, like big deal. I mean, it's still it's still Mark Wahlberg. Like, God damn. Hell yeah. yeah, man. So, so what are the plans? Like, do you have plans for touring? Like, when you whenever the yeah, album comes out. Yeah, you know, get this album out. It's on pre-sale now, and it'll be out. Uh, I think like August thirtieth or twentieth, it officially mm-hmm. comes out. But so you know, first, every- I think August first. October first, up to so. Um, yeah, it's out and and uh, touring is is definitely what we want to do, right? We want to yeah. get out there. So, I mean, obviously things are opening up in America to do it, but we got to really everybody has to travel. So, you know, you got to remember people are coming here and and whatever. So, it's going to be uh, as soon as we can get out there and do it, we are. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and you know, if you guys are in Texas, I'm I'm definitely going to be there. So, yeah, man. Well, I, I know I got huh. I'm like right outside of Dallas. All right. So like kind of kind of close to Louisiana. But uh Okay, well yeah. then when we get there, make sure you yell at me on social media, find my Facebook pages or whatever, Instagram, Twitter, and then uh, we'll hook up and and uh, see see some of those Zingbay chops. <laughs> well, yeah, I need to start practicing again then. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, man. Well, I, I appreciate everything. I appreciate you coming by. I know I got to get you out here. So, um, yeah, man. Good luck with everything. The album so far sounds amazing. Uh, can't wait to come see you guys. All right. Thanks, Cody, man. First right, No problem, man. Have a good one. Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. I tell you, you start counting five like a sucker.